Will you join me in the greeting? The Lord be with you. We give thanks today for the God of immeasurable faithfulness, the one who provides and sustains with both strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. You may be seated. I welcome you to this time of thanksgiving and remembrance in the spirit of the prophet Isaiah as he speaks these words to us. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And after being carried by the Holy Spirit through the challenges, trials, losses, and pains of 2020, we are still here to give God thanks and to remember those who walked alongside of us in and along this journey. We're here to witness to the world that not even the challenge of COVID-19 or any threat brought against God's church can stop us from being the people of God who are triumphant and who will prevail against any and all odds, for we are, amen, the people of God. And we come here today to witness to that power and that resurrection power that carries us through all of these trials and tribulations. So today I welcome you to come and receive the power that God alone supplies, that gives us strength to be renewed so we can have bright hope for tomorrow. In the midst of all of these challenges, come, let us give thanks and let us remember those who have gone before us. Amen? It is also my tremendous pleasure uh, to stand before you today, not only as the Bishop of the Mississippi Annual Conference, but to introduce to you our preacher uh, for this time of thanksgiving and remembrance. Uh, our preacher is the Bishop William T. McAlealy, who is a native of the Mississippi Annual Conference. Amen? Amen, y'all. He is of your flesh and of your blood, born out of the root tree of the Mississippi Conference, nurtured in the faith through many laypersons and clergy he encountered as he grew up in this native land. Uh, it is somewhat evident to many of you early in his life, some of you might have even had the pleasure of uh, <clears throat> correcting Bill along his journey, amen. Uh, we know that we Southerners will do that from time to time. But you also had a chance to see the gifts and graces that God had placed upon his life even before he recognized them himself. But when he did and when he heard the call of God upon his life, Bill not only responded with a resounding yes, but he heard the challenge to prepare himself. And so he enrolled in one of the great colleges here in Mississippi, Millsaps College. And there he received his Bachelor's of Arts in Religion and completed that degree and went on to uh, Candler School of Theology at Emory University and graduated from there in 1981 with the Master's of Divinity degree. And during the time while he was matriculating uh, at Candler School of Theology, he was ordained a deacon in the Mississippi Conference of the United Methodist Church in 1979, and later on in 1982, he was ordained an elder uh, in the Mississippi Conference. Bishop McAlealy served in a variety of settings as a local pastor in the state of Georgia and in Mississippi, serving small membership congregations, developed a new congregation, served as the pastor of a county seat, town church, and also large membership churches. And in 2006, he was appointed as a district superintendent 
in the seashore district in the wake of the devastation of Hurricane Katrina, where he led that particular district uh, in the recovery from the devastation of Hurricane Katrina. While serving uh, in the Mississippi Conference, he served in many capacities beyond the local church as well, serving um, on the board of uh, the Mississippi Conference of Senior Services, the board of Millsaps College, Methodist Foundation, on the board of ordained ministry, and serving as a delegate to jurisdictional and general conferences. And in 2012, uh, the delegates to the Southeastern Jurisdiction uh, Conference uh, saw in this man gifts and graces to serve even beyond uh, the district and the annual conference by electing him as a bishop uh, for the United Methodist Church. He was then assigned as the resident bishop of the Nashville Episcopal area, where he is currently now serving. And in that capacity as bishop, he has continued to serve beyond his own area, serving on the board of trustees at Emory uh, University, and I think right now currently serving as the vice president of the board uh, at Emory uh, University. He also serves on the board of Methodist Labana uh, Healthcare Board. Uh, he's also the president of the General Board of Higher Education and Ministry of the United Methodist Church and a member of the Connectional Table and on the board of trustees of Martin College. He and his wife, Lynn, who is here with us. Lynn, if you'll please stand so we can recognize you. Will we please show our appreciation to Lynn, amen, who's with us today. Well, were married uh, in 1978, and to that union, um, they were blessed with two children, Chris, who is a member of this annual conference, and the daughter, Laura, uh, five grandchildren, amen. Yes. Uh, to continue that wonderful legacy of the McAlilis. And so we welcome Bishop McAlilly uh, back home, amen. So he has uh, all rights and privileges to, uh, to preach like he wants to out of the Christ United Methodist pulpit and to bless us with the Word of God. For we've come to hear that Word as we give thanks for the people uh, who God saw fit uh, to take from among us between 2019 and 2021, uh, who are no longer with us in, um, in the flesh, but who are with us now in spirit, for we feel their presence. And who better to come and to bless us during this time than one who was born among us, who knew many of these people, who were blessed by many of these people, and whom was also one uh, who blessed many of those persons who have gone on before us. So will you now uh, join me, and he will come later on and preach, but I want you to do this now. Will you welcome Bishop McAlady to this pulpit? Amen. <laughs> and now may we draw near to God as we pray together. Will you join me in this prayer? Blessed are you, O God. For you are holy, gracious, and good, the hope of all the faithful. As we gather today to honor and remember those who have gone before, we acknowledge our own sorrow and grief, comfort those who mourn, and fill humble hearts with gladness. We do not grieve as those who have no hope, for Christ has died and Christ has risen. And through Christ, we receive victory over sin and death in the holy name of Jesus. And we all say, Amen. So let us now prepare our hearts to celebrate the legacy of those we have loved and lost, as Mr. Stephen Howler sings for us. Yeah. 
Today we gather in this holy space to remember and to celebrate those clergy and spouses whose service and ministries helped build the kingdom of God on earth and whose unwavering faith in Christ Jesus ushered them into the kingdom that is to come. Today we remember Doyce W. Gunter. Charles Andy Andrew Collette. Roderick L. Intrican. Stephen E. Tillman.
Adam Bird Hillman. Robert L. King. Charles A. Morrison. James Edward McGill. Hollis Jesse Howell. Benjamin F. Lewis. Johnny A. Dinas. Burnell Newsom. Thomas Lafayette Pace. Robert DeWitt Jones, Jr. Britton Hoover Maxwell, Jr. Leon L. Cooper. Marvin J. Gibson. Thomas Carnell Hawks. John David Humphrey, Jr. Betty Wisenant Flynn. Charles E. Hassel, Jr. Lester Clarence Shows. Herbert Lavelle Woodrick. Billy R. Pearson. Glenn Shows. Jerry Lane Norris. Jack Stigler Smith. Charles Ray Batiste. E. Truman Thompson. Dabney Philip Box. Jean W. Crawley. Glenn Owen Weigel. Harrison F. Upshaw, D. Elton Brown, Walter Raymond Myers, Robert Carroll Sr., Robert Yates Butts, Hugh Smith Whiteside. Aubrey L. Boren. Robert Earl Greeno. Walter A. Leffler, Jr. James C. Threadgill. Edward Eugene Woodall, Jr. Sturman Williamson. Philip Wayne Heidelberg. Edwin Gilmer Potts, Sr. Charles Sessions Polk. Eddie Ford, 
James Rayford Woodrick. William Earl Matthews. Roy C. Graffenreed. Robert Bobby Poole. William C. McLaurin. Henry G. Winstead. Larry Joe Haggard, Sr. Howard Herring. Robert L. Jenkins. William H. Wicker. Thomas Jerry Mitchell. Willie James Young. Ruth Matthew Wood. Betty Randall Freeman. Deborah Rose Hendricks White. Linnell Purvis. Lynn B. Gutterman. Bobby R. Hart. Deanna J. Karuba. Vetris Moore Williams. Barbara Russell. Joyce P. Heath. Dorothy Curry Champ. Irene S. Tony. Jeanette Leffler. Ella Wee King. Mary Louise Brister. Loreen Long McAlilly. Irvita F. Moffat. Wilma Lee Floyd McClelland. Virginia B. Wheat. Ella Joanne Robbins. Martha Jane Halbert. Juanita Smith Peden. Joan Roche McCain. Joyce R. Russell. Wilma Winstead. Marjorie Wood Rogers. Marjorie E. Greeno. Francis B. Smith. Sarah Ann Powell Shelley. Willadine D. Roby. Elizabeth M. Bryant. Betty Bullock. Carolyn Kirk King Bramlett. Brenda Terrell. Molly Lois Jackson. Edna E. Cupid. 
Sue Kennedy Carroll. Thomas Lewis Piazza. Velma Jean S. Brewer. Edward A. Moultrie. Sybil June Tubby. Jerry D. Witt. Ann M. Thomas. William, Wilma Janice Fleming. Marjorie M. Beard. Alice Louise Pickens. Sybil C. Williamson. Today, we gather in this holy place to remember and to celebrate the saints among our laity whose faithfulness and commitment built up churches that changed lives and furthered the gospel of Jesus Christ. We celebrate that they know rest from their labors in the eternal presence of Christ. Today, we remember Turner Arendt, Don Bell, Soren Bowie, Anne Bridgeforth, Buddy Cox, Margaret Crook, Les Dickin, Dewey Hannon, Ray Harper, Sue Harper, David Harris, Ray Hawkins, Janet Hudson, Randall Jackson, Faye Laboon, Bill Howell, Diane Howell, Tomas Jones, Jerry McCarson, John Mothershed, John Clayton Pastor, Rose Roberts, Rena Rogers, Ann Sanford, Sarah Shelley, Glenn Shaw. Liddell Smith, Bab Staus, Sybil Tubby, Carolyn Tyson, Ray Wilkinson, Larry Woodward, Honorable Woods. Pray with me if you so choose the prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.
Hear now the reading of God's holy word. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples then rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he'd said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. He said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. And a week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them and the doors were closed shut and Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands, reach out your hand and put it in my side, do not doubt but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It is indeed a a deep and profound privilege to be here in this place, in this space, standing in this pulpit as a part of the memorial service for the Mississippi Conference. Thank you, Bishop Swanson, for the invitation. I look across this congregation and I look across these names and I'm humbled for so many reasons. Hopefully I can share some of those as we go along, but I will note that 11 of these clergy and spouses were a part of the Seashore District when I was a district superintendent, and that is profoundly, uh, I don't know that I've lost words here, deeply moving and sad at the loss of the loved ones who served alongside us. Amen. Well, here we are. And before we begin, I think we need to pray a bit. So will you join me? Holy and loving God, we need to hear you breathe and speak your Holy Spirit upon our lives and hear again the words, peace be with you. Or as one who's paraphrased it a bit, be at peace, be at peace. This is a heavy list of folk we have named today and they each have a story to tell, have their lives tell a story. And we are profoundly blessed because they walked our way. Oh God, we know in some small way we stand on their shoulders because we know that we did not get here on our own. They brought us, and for that we are profoundly grateful. May we give you the praise today for these and for this word, 
and that may these words that I offer be enough. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. If you go west from Louisville, Mississippi, out Highway 14, you will come after about 10 miles to a road called Shiloh Road. And if you turn left on Shiloh Road and go another mile or so, you will come to Center Ridge United Methodist Church. Center Ridge has gone the way many of our smaller congregations have by attrition. Those who were a part of that congregation no longer sustainable. I believe the conference closed Center Ridge last year. But Center Ridge is the home church of the McAlilly clan. In the 1840s when Richard McAlilly and his wife and his mother, Margaret Williford, moved to Winston County, they were Presbyterians. And there wasn't a Presbyterian church within a wagon's day drive of the home place and so they became Methodists. I say we were predestined to be Methodists. <clears throat> But this church, this little congregation, Center Ridge, is where our family claims our rootedness as Wesleyan United Methodist. It is our foundation, if you will, of our faith. Our ancestors are there. They're buried, and many of them, in the cemetery there. Some of you know the name of Jimmy Buskirk. Jimmy Buskirk's father was the pastor at Center Ridge when my father was growing up. And it was Jimmy's daddy who said to my daddy, God might have a call on your life. My brother and I laughed and said, if Jimmy's daddy hadn't done that, we might be working at the Caterpillar factory in Louisville now. But this for me personally is the prevenient grace that has operated in our family for since, since the mid 1800s. And so here we are, this tribe of ours, all of us have a story like this. I began thinking about this story as I prepared for this time together and my memory took me down the road to Center Ridge. It also took me out in Union County to where the Salem United Methodist Church is, my mother's home church. My father comes to be a student pastor when he's a sophomore at Ole Miss. He said hello to her one minute and the next minute she was married to him. <laughs> but you have stories just like this, don't you? Memories are stored up like treasures in earthen vessels and these stories come tumbling out sometimes and they remind us of who we are and whose we are and how they shaped us and formed us and encouraged us and taught us. These are the stories to be told among the saints we name today. I look down this list of pastors and spouses of the laity, and I think how many of them contributed to our own faith journeys? I think of those spouses who were behind the scenes always encouraging, figuring out how to, how to put a meal on the table when, for their family when there was more month than there was money. My brother and I laughed, we, we said we were grown before we realized that uh, the reason we ate so many chicken pot pies was because they were cheap. So many memories. And it's our memories that bear us up in our times of grief when we walk through the valley of the shadow of darkness and death and defeat. It's our memory of our loved ones, of these saints who are in our cloud of witnesses now that hold us up. You who are family know how many Saturday nights were lost because there was a sermon that wasn't quite finished and your pastor in the family had to be back in the study cranking it out a little bit longer. Or vacations interrupted because a church member's having emergency surgery or worse a death and you have gotta rush home and do the thing you do. How many Christmas Eve dinners were delayed because the pastor in the family was tied up making sure all the candles were snuffed out and the doors were locked? And how many moving vans? 
how many new schools for children, how many new friends to be made. How many times has a well-meaning church member said to a son or daughter, you know, PKs are the worst kids in town. And some of us tried to live up to that <coughs> and did. We won't name names, but I see some of you in the room. Memories are gifts. I read these names and remember. I know you do the same. I see Ed Woodall. There's a campfire on the last night of Camp Lake Stevens. And I see Ed reading Bear and Bunny story to us. Ed was the conference youth director when I was a teenager. And it was Ed who first said to me, Bill, you might want to pay attention. God may have something for you to do. I see Glenn Weigel, thumb up, encouraging you. Fishing pole in your hand, quietly whispering to his friends long before the appointed cabinet meets Bishop, where he's gonna go with the next appointed session. <laughs> and God, as my witness, he did. <laughs> I'm not sure how that worked. He was prophetic in that way. I, I saw it happen many times. I see Dabney Box. Dabney was in the New Albany district when my dad was a DS and how he loved district preachers meetings. That's a lost art, friends. People who love district preachers meetings. <laughs> I see Tom Pace. Tom cut his teeth at the Wesley Foundation at the University of Southern Mississippi, but his ministry was probably most profound when he was at Picayune and he was dealing with these folk who weren't Mississippians coming in to work at Nassau who were diverse of thought and he somehow figured out how to blend these foreigners with these natives and allowed the diversity in that space to grow and blossom and bloom. Now that's a gift. I see Elton Brown, good old Elton. Elton was one of the ones who was able to navigate the civil rights era without feeling like he needed to go somewhere else to serve and he did it well in this conference and we give thanks to God for that man. He was a gentle giant. Did you see Johnny Donis at annual conference with me? His resolution every year to pray and my word could that man pray. And he would take us right up to the throne of grace, just right there, Johnny. What a saint. I see Doris Gunner urging us to strengthen the local church, strengthen the small membership church, strengthen parish ministry, love Wood College with a passion and a depth that made us all realize not how much he loved Wood, but how much he loved Christ. And he saw wood as a place for young people to come to know Christ and a way to serve in the world. I see Bird Hillman. Bird knew everybody in the annual conference. And if he didn't, he faked it. <coughs> Man, never met a stranger, but here's what Bird could do. Bird could tell you the truth and you could hear it. And you'd walk away just saying, how do you know that? I hear him at a general conference delegation conversation about whoever was running for bishop at the time. And he would always ask the delegation, is he or she electable? Well, if, if they're not, don't waste your vote. I see Lavelle Woodrick. Most often I see him in my mind's eye at New Albany First United Methodist Church on Christmas Eve reading a Christmas story or telling a Christmas story more often from Faulkner. He was so wise in the words of Faulkner. How odd it is for the Woodricks to be here together with two brothers on this day. Rayford, 
I see Rayford with a steno pad in hand, listening, capturing every detail, and then coming back and creating a story that captured every nuance of what had happened at whatever annual conference or whatever jurisdictional conference or whatever juro jurisdictional conference and put it in the printed form in the Methodist Advocate. When I was a church planner, I asked Rayford to run a special advocate, a front page story that we would send out in direct mail to all the folk in DeSoto County and Rayford made that happen for me. And then I see him at St. Matthew's where I think his real joy became at the later years of his life with Bibles in hand, opening up God's word to the congregation. I loved it because I didn't have to teach a Bible study while I was pastor there. <laughs> and, but the, here's the thing, he loved the children. My word, he loved the children. And they loved him. I see Smith Whiteside. That sly grin on his face, showing up at every surgery, every funeral, lovingly being the kind of pastor, oh, if I had just had a pastor like Smith Whiteside when I was growing up, I think I could have made it. Philip Heidelberg, gentle giant. I won't tell you all the things Philip told me when I was his district superintendent. <laughs> but he would come into my office something and he would say, Bill, I need, I need a little help financially. I said, Phil, I, I don't think I can do that. He said, well, you have not because you ask not. <laughs> and I would feel so bad. <laughs> but what I remember most about Philip was his willingness to go where his bishop sent him and was a pioneer in cross-racial appointments in this conference. And he took the hits for the rest of us in that season. I see Jerry Witt, Sue's husband, following her trail out of the college classroom into the congregation, and Jerry was a good Susanna for, for Sue. He went where she went. Hank Winstead leading Wesley to relocate to Madison County and give that congregation new life as it became St. Matthew's. I guess Jerry Mitchell may have been the first person I came to know when the two conferences merged and Gary began to talk, Jerry began to talk to me about evangelism and stewardship. And then later I was on his board at the foundation. What a saint. And Ruth Wood, how many people knew Ruth Wood? I mean, she, she was a trailblazer. She, was, she, she made, the, made it possible for the women in, who are in ministry today to be in ministry in this state because she went where and was willing to go when nobody else would and didn't take with five minutes for folks to fall in love with her. Bill Matthews, Bill was one of those seashore district survivors of Katrina. He survived Katrina in the balcony of his little church and he thought he was not gonna survive and then he helped those folk rebuild. I had to have knee surgery because Bill took me on the racquetball court and tore up my knee trying to keep up with him. He was several years older than me and I never could win. I see Marjorie Greeno encouraging Earl to go to Estonia, to be engaged in evangelism and mission for the sake of the gospel. I see Earl saying, we can do this, let's do it, come on. Sarah Shelley holding Gus's hand when their home was wrecked by the storm of Katrina and they lived in the church at Gulfport first. And who remembers Rod Intrican who served in the state hospital patiently and caringly for those who were struggling. There's a whole list of these names. I could call all of them. I could tell stories about many of them. I'm sorry if I can't call them all and tell all the stories, but you tell them. There are hundred stories I, I do not know of your loved ones, but what a gift. Here's, here's what I think would be a great exercise. Get your story, 
get Jim Woodrick to collect them. <laughs> this is a great idea, Jim. And, <laughs> and then create a book of those stories and give them to the ordinands as a way of continuing the legacy of these that we love. What a gift that would be to these young pastors. But here are these pastors, these loved ones, these saints who proclaim the gospel in season, out of season, spouses faithfully praying and supporting and sometimes listen to the same sermon probably a dozen times through the years. You know what I mean. Bless their hearts, these spouses who put up with these preachers of us who are like us, right? Turn with me now to see Jesus. He comes to his bewildered, grieving disciples not long before they've gathered for a meal in an upper room. And he reminds them that night, that last night of his love for them and how they ought also to love one another. And here they are back in this familiar place, a place where they can gather to collect themselves. They just want to just sort of want to make sense out of what's happened. And they consider how, trying to figure out how to move forward without their leader. And Jesus comes in the room and says, peace peace just peace those of you who've lived these long months through dual pandemics of COVID-19 and systemic racism and have had to walk through the valley of the shadow of death in a harsh and isolated season desperately longing to hear a word from our Lord you need to hear the Lord say to you peace peace up in the Memphis Conference, Carryville first, we lost our pastor two days after year with complications from COVID-19. It's been a hard season. The Friday before we shut down for COVID-19, our churches for COVID-19, my mother died March 13. My wife Lynn's mother died just a few weeks ago. We feel like death has bookended the COVID season in our family. And like many of you, our services of death and resurrection have been awkward. They've been socially distanced. At times we've been bewildered, disoriented, angry, and sad, just like the disciples, I think, must have been. And sometimes our family, we've hunkered down and we've huddled up like those disciples in the upper room after Jesus is crucified. And we sometimes have been afraid and there has been darkness we have experienced and they have stirred all kinds of emotions. I wonder about you. Is this true for you also? Have there been a range of emotions in this season for you? What do you come with today? Do you come with deep sadness, confusion, a bit of numbness? Is there any rage or pain or anger do you feel, have you felt so inadequate to measure up to the enormity of this season? I'll be honest with you, I felt most of those. I wonder about you. Let me invite you, if whatever you bring here today, whatever you've been wrestling with in this season, bring this as your offering to God. Let it be at the foot of the cross. Lay it down and let it go. Place these things in God's good hands and hear Jesus speak those words that he spoke to the disciples, peace. Peace be with you. Bring them to Jesus. I love Stevens. Give me Jesus. That's what we need. Not just now, but all the time, but especially now. And so just bring these feelings, these words, this frustration, this hurt, this grief, and release them. Bishop Swanson, in his opening remarks, reminded us of the resurrection, that we are the people of Easter. We are Easter people and we live in the resurrection. But here's the thing to know about the resurrection. Before Jesus sends the disciples with the Great Commission, he meets their deepest needs by offering the word peace and giving them the Holy Spirit. Before he sends them out, he builds them up. And so let this be a moment for you where you're caught up in the Spirit's gift of peace.
maybe for some of us, Easter's grown dim. And we're tempted to hunker down in the midst of the darkness. And when the darkest hour is just before the dawn, as the old hymn says, we do so knowing that the darkness may be great, but the darkness does not, cannot, and will not overcome the light. The light and the love of Christ has come into the world. And we Easter people proclaim the light and love of Christ who overcomes even death. And because the light of Christ has come into the world, the death of these saints is not an ending. It is a transition. What we know is this, that the day that the God we love loves us with an everlasting love, the God who teaches us the way of love and life is weeping and wanting to wipe every tear from our eyes. I want to ask you to do something. It's a little unusual for me to do this, but I want to ask you to just stay with me for a minute. I want to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you to say aloud the name of the person for whom you are in this room today for. I simply want you to speak the name. If you're watching me virtually, I ask you name aloud those people in your life who's, who touched you deeply. Now, would you say the name? Just say the name. Thank you. If we're not careful, we will allow our grief and bewilderment to overcome us, but naming helps us remember what was, what was it that Moses asked God, who are you? And he gave him a name. Naming helps us. If we're not full of care, our ability to see clearly the light of Christ and the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, we'll be clouded by everything we lost. So how do we respond? How do we go from here? How do we release this load of grief from our, into the hands of God? If we're not full of care for ourselves and for our, each other, for our families, we will lose sight of the, one of the last commandments Christ gave us to love. And if we're not careful, if we not tend to the pain and suffering and sorrow and loss of our grief, we will not bear fruit that will last. So hold on to the memories, and the names, and the love and hold on to each other. So we listen. I'm going to try to land this plane here just in a second. My brother said, thank God. <laughs> I know a pastor upon her retirement was given a thick notebook full of letters from folks she had served. There was no mention in the letters of any membership growth of the church had grown. There was nothing in the letters about the building program that they had accomplished, though they had done well with that. There was nothing about the sanctuary that had been constructed, not a mention of the mission efforts, although there had been many. But every letter, every letter in this notebook was about her pastoral presence. You were there when our first child was born. You came when my father was having surgery. When my husband died, I looked up and you were there. This, friends, is the legacy of these saints we name today. I know a pastor, Becca Stevens, in Nashville, Tennessee. Her father, Joe Stevens, was a pastor, was killed by a drunk driver after church one Sunday after having made a pastoral call. Thirty years later, Becca learned this story from a nurse who happened to be caring for her mother in the hospital. It was this, this is, this is how God works. This was nurse. It was this nurse's parents where Joe Stevens, the pastor, went to make the pastoral call on the Sunday that he died in the car wreck. And God arranged such a meeting between this pastor, this daughter of the pastor, and this nurse. And she said, had it not been for your father, my parents' marriage would not have made it. It was a healing. Somewhere. Someday, somebody will come up to you and they will tell you or say to you, who was your mother? Who was your father? And you'll say the name and they'll say, well, I thought that was the case. Would you know, would you, would you believe that if it hadn't been for your father or your mother, I would not have made it. And you will have never heard that story and your life will be profoundly blessed by the grace of God. 
because it is that God who raised Jesus from the dead and walked into a room with his friends and said, peace be with you. Peace, peace be with you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And the church said, amen. We want to join in our affirmation of faith. May we stand together. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things we are conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.
you out. He's never failed you yet. And may the peace of Christ be with you always. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And the church said, Amen. Amen.